Welcome to Learn and Fly Melbourne. I'm one of the instructors here and my name is Clement. Today, we're going to talk about basic instrument flight. So what is basic instrument flight? It means that we only rely on the instruments, but not the visual horizon. You may wonder that contradicts to what we have learned before, which is to fly visually as much as we can. However, when the weather conditions are unfavorable and difficult for visual flying, and we inadvertently flew into some cloud, it will be extremely difficult to orientate ourselves. To ensure the aircraft is maintaining control, we have to fly by instruments. When conducting instrument flying, the most important instrument is the artificial horizon. On the Diamond DA40, the main artificial horizon is integrated on the G1 Nelson on the primary flight display and the backup artificial horizon is on top of the G1000. The artificial horizon allows us to determine the degrees of pitch and roll. Most importantly, it simulates the horizon to allow the pilot to determine the orientation of the aircraft. The top of the artificial horizon has a triangle, and that is to show the angle of bank. Those lines indicate the various amount of angle of bank. When flying by instruments, bank the aircraft to a specific angle of bank to achieve the desired performance. To know the airspeed of the aircraft, we can refer to the airspeed indicator. On the Diamond DA40, we have two airspeed indicators. The primary airspeed indicator is on the left side of the primary flight displays of G1000. The standby airspeed indicator is on the top of the G1000. The unit for airspeed indicator is in knots. It is calculated in nautical miles per hour. To understand how high the aircraft is flying, please refer to the altimeter. We have two altimeters on board. The primary one is on the right side of the primary flight display and the backup one is on the top. The unit of altimeter is in feet. It shows the vertical distance above mean sea level. Before each flight, based on the air pressure on that day, set the correct air pressure setting to calibrate the altimeter. In Australia, the official unit for air pressure is hectopascal and the air pressure will be provided in QNH question nil height. What QNH means is that when the correct QNH is set in the altimeter, it shows the vertical distance above nil height, which is mean sea level. However, there could be instrumentation errors. When the flight is conducting during the day in visual flight rules, the altimeter reading has to be within 100 feet of the actual elevation, and this has to be checked before each flight. To determine the direction of the aircraft, we can rely on the horizontal situation indicator, or known as the directional indicator which is on the primary flight display of the G1000. The standby magnetic compass locates on the top right corner of the dashboard. Those are the most used and most important instrumentation for instrument flying. Therefore, they all have a backup system in case of an instrumentation failure. To ensure the aircraft is in balance, refer to the balance bar, or known as a slip skid indicator, which locates under the triangle that shows the angle of the bank. If the bar is to the right of the triangle, more right rudder is needed. If the bar is to the left of the triangle, more left rudder is needed. When the balance bar is right underneath the triangle, it indicates the aircraft is in balance. To find out the vertical speed of the aircraft, refer to the vertical speed indicator. It is located to the right side of the primary flight display. The unit for this instrument is in feet per minute. During a descent in instrument flight, maintaining a standard rate of descent of 500 feet per minute would allow a smooth but efficient rate of descent while not disorientating to the pilot. During instrument flying, not only do we have a standard rate for descending, but also for turning. All turn has to be conducted at rate 1 turn. Rate 1 turn is a standard rate of turn. The aircraft will turn at 3 degrees per second, or 360 degrees in 2 minutes. But how do we know the required angle of bank for rate 1 turn while flying? The following equation would show the required angle of bank for rate 1 turn. The true airspeed divided by 10 plus 7. If the current airspeed of the aircraft is 120 knots, the required angle of bank to achieve rate 1 turn will be 19 degrees. However, if the aircraft is in a climb and is flying at 80 knots, the angle of bank required for rate 1 turn will reduce to 15 degrees. Secondly, the attitude for straight and level climbing and descending. Focus on the markings for the pitch attitude on the artificial horizon. During a climb, pitch up to positive 7.5 degrees. 
When flying straight and level, pitch for positive 1 degree. And on descent, pitch for negative 1 degree. Last but not least, during instrument flight, we must trust our instruments. When we're no longer flying by the actual horizon, or lose the visual component for the orientation, our vestibular apparatus can be extremely unreliable and sends out mixed message and confuses us and in the end causes extreme disorientation and it can be very dangerous. When the aircraft is in the pre-entry stage, the work cycle is H-A-L. Heading. Set the nominated heading on the heading buck. Altitude. Set the nominated altitude on the altitude buck. Look out. When flying by instruments, you will not be able to look outside. So, please ask your instructor to look out for you before maneuvering. Entry cycle. P. A. S. T. Power. Set power according to the maneuver. The power setting is the same as normal visual flying. Attitude. Set the pitch attitude based on the artificial horizon. Speed. Allow the speed to stabilize before trim. Trim until hands off state. If a turn is being conducted, the entry work cycle for turning is B, B, B. Bank. Bank until the rate one turn angle of bank. Balance. Maintain the balance with the balance bar. Back pressure. Maintain the aircraft's pitch attitude. In the maintenance cycle, the primary scan technique is T-scan. First of all, focus on the artificial horizon to ensure the pitch and roll of the aircraft is correct. Then move over to the airspeed indicator to cross-check the speed is normal. Back to the artificial horizon, then to the heading to ensure the aircraft is maintaining the correct heading. And then again, back to the artificial horizon to check for the correct pitch and roll attitude. After that, move to the altimeter. Check the altitude is normal and lastly, move back to the artificial horizon to check for the pitch and roll attitude and that is a T-scan. The secondary scan includes the angle of bank, balance bar and the vertical speed. After ensuring the secondary scan are all normal, we can resume to the T-scan, primary scan, until the start of the exit cycle. To determine the start of the exit cycle, it is down to the vertical speed of the aircraft. During a descent, 500 feet per minute should be maintained. Normally, the start of the exit cycle is 10% of the vertical speed. In this case, start leveling off at 50 feet before reaching the nominated altitude. The same principle applies to leveling off from a climb. The exit cycle for a climb is ASPT. Attitude. Set straight and level attitude. Speed. Allow the speed to stabilize at 120 knots. Power. Set 22 inches of manifold pressure and 2200 RPM. Trim. Until hands off state. The exit cycle for descending is P A S T. Power. Set 22 inches of manifold pressure and 2200 RPM. Attitude. Set straight and level attitude. Speed. Allow the speed to stabilize at 120 knots. Trim. Until hands off state. The exit cycle for turning is B, B, B. Bank. Use aileron to level the weight. Balance. Use rudder to maintain balance. Back pressure. Use elevator to maintain a pitch attitude. When the aircraft has resumed straight level flight, continue with the T scan and secondary scan. During trend level at normal cruise power setting, the correct attitude will be positive 1.5 degrees. Before flying train level, we have to do the pre-entry cycle, H-A-L. Heading, 090, A altitude, 4000 feet, lookout. You gotta ask your instructor to look out for you. That's why I can't do Biff when you're flying solo. I now look out now, left, center, center, right, it's all clear, so we can proceed to the next stage. Entry cycle, P-A-S-T, power, set, attitude, maintain the same attitude, speed, about 110 to 120 knots, trim until hands off state. Maintain cycle is a T scan. Attitude, maintain positive 1.5 degrees. Airspeed, good. Attitude, good. Heading, we have deviated to the right a tiny bit, so I'll correct that by turning left. Back to attitude, altitude 4000 feet, T scan complete. And now we can start the secondary scan. The secondary scan includes the angle of bank. You can see the wings are level at the moment, balance bar is balanced, 
Vertical speed is not showing, climbing or descending. And the engine T's and P's are all in the green sector. And that is how you fly Shren level in BIF. In a climb, the pre-entry is text L. Heading 245, set heading bug. L shoot, let's say we're climbing to 5,500 feet, set 5,500. L lookout, left, center, center, right and up, no traffic and we can start to climb. PAST, entry cycle, power. A attitude, cruise climb, positive 5 degree. Do not forget to apply enough right rudder to maintain balance and directional control. Speed will settle at around 90 knots. Trim. Trim back until hands off state. During the climb, conduct the maintenance cycle T scan. Attitude 5 degree. Speed 90 knots. Attitude 5 degree. Heading, maintaining heading. Attitude 5 degree. Altitude is showing the aircraft is climbing. Secondary scan. Zero degree of angle of bank. Balance by in the middle. Vertical speed is indicating a climb at around 500 to 600 feet per minute. Engine T's and P's are all in the green. And when there are 50 feet left to climb, we can initiate the exit cycle. And it is ASPT. Attitude back to positive 1.5 degree. Speed about 100 knots. Power reduced to 22 inches of metal pressure at 2200 RPM. And we can trim until hands off state. And that is how we do a climb in a BIF. To conduct a level turn during BIF, the pre-entry is section AL. Heading. Our current heading is 100 degree. If we're turning left to heading 330, set it on the heading box 330. A altitude. We're maintaining 3,500 feet. We'll try to maintain this altitude during the level turn. L lookout. Kindly ask your instructor to look out for you. Because we are turning left, so clear right, center, center, left, no traffic, and we can start the entry cycle, bank, balance, back pressure. Remember the angle of bank has to be at rate 1 turn of angle of bank. The current true speed is 117, let's round down to 110. 110 divided by 10 plus 7 is 18 degree, so we'll be doing an 18 degree angle of bank for rate 1 turn. Balance, we'll use a bit of left rudder to maintain balance. Back pressure, apply a bit of back pressure to maintain positive 1.5 degree of attitude. After establishing in the turn, start to do the C-scan. Attitude, maintain the same attitude. Speed is normal, attitude, heading, keep turning. Attitude is still normal, and back to the altitude to ensure level. In the secondary scan, look for the correct angle of bank. Balance bar, the vertical speed is showing zero, and the T's and P's are in green. With about 15 degrees to go, start to unbank. Balance and release a bit of back pressure. Maintain a heading of 330 and resume straight and level. And that is how you conduct a level turn in BIF. To do a descending turn during BIF, the pre-entry cycle is XAL. Heading. Assume we're turning right to 130 degree. A altitude. Let's say we're descending to 3,000 feet. Our lookout. Ask your instructor to look out. Left, center, center, right. It's all clear of traffic, so we can start the entry cycle with the descent, which is passed. Power, cruise power, setting 18 inches. Attitude is minus 1.5 degrees. Lower the nose until it shows that on the artificial horizon. Speed is about 110 to 120 knots. And trim until hands off state. When the aircraft is stabilized, look out again, then bank, balance, back pressure. Left, center, center, right, all clear. Bank, we're banked to 18 degrees. Balance with right rudder. Back pressure, apply back pressure to maintain minus 1.5 degrees. During the turn, conduct a T scan. Maintain the correct attitude to the airspeed, which is about 110 to 120, back to attitude and back to the heading to see how much more to turn. 
Add a shoot to the right, which is the altimeter, to see how much more to descend. For the secondary scan, focus on the angle of bank to ensure 80 degrees is maintained. Balance of the aircraft and the engine parameters are normal. You can see the manifold pressure is slowly increasing because of the increasing air pressure during descent. So we have to reduce power every now and then. Also, we have to maintain the descent rate at 500 feet per minute. We are 10 degrees away from the heading, so opposite bank, balance, back pressure. To stop the turning, but we'll keep descending and keep going with the T scan and secondary scan. When there is 50 feet to descend, we will start the exit cycle PSC. Power back to 22 inches manifold pressure. Raise the nose to positive 1.5 degrees of attitude. Stop the descent. Speed about 110 to 120 knots. Trim until hands off state. And that is how we conduct a descending turn in BIF. Now is the time for threat and error management for this basic instrument flight lesson. So what are some of the threats and errors that we have to look out for? Firstly, when flying by instruments, we lose the visual horizon for orienting the aircraft. Without the visual cues, our vestibular apparatus will be extremely unreliable. You may think that the aircraft is flying train level, but in fact, it is in a spiral dive. The only way to operate safely is to trust your instruments and utilize the work cycle that we have covered earlier. Secondly, in this lesson, you'll be put on the hood to block the vision to look outside, to simulate your in cloud and to force you to rely on the instruments. Because of that, you'll not be able to look out before maneuvering. Hence, please ask your instructor to look out for you before changing directions. This is also the reason why conducting basic instrument flying is only allowed when you have a qualified instructor on board with you. And that is it for today guys, thank you for watching, please don't forget to subscribe to Learn With Fly's YouTube channel for more great content and follow us on Facebook and Instagram. I will see you guys next time, cheers.